The German company Acufox offers an 8 port network switch for almost 800 euros and it reportedly improves the audio quality. It's even more surprising when you know it's in fact a tweak D-Link switch. And if you think that's crazy, think again. Now, before I start a review, let me state clearly that if you have a thousand euro stereo and enjoy it to the max, don't bother to watch this video. But if you have a well set up stereo for a few thousand euros, you might find this interesting. If you own a stereo equal or better than my setup one, you must watch this video. In this video I will compare my TP-Link switch with the S-Boost Linear Power Supply to the AccuSwitch SE. The TP-Link is the switch in my audio and video setup in the living room and thus feeds the SOTM SMS200 Ultra in setup 1 with an Ethernet signal. Normally I discuss the hardware before I come to the sound quality. This time a different approach. I'll start with the sound. Comparing the two switches, the AccuSwitch SE gives clearly more detail, especially in the mid-range. Furthermore the stereo image was deeper and more in focus while the highs like triangles sounded cleaner. And then there was this undefinable tranquility by lack for better words. Or perhaps less stress is better or relaxation. I don't really know how to describe it and it's not huge, it's subtle, but it's there. Or perhaps better, the small amount of stress that appeared to be there with my own switch is gone using the AccuSwitch SE. I was lent the AccuSwitch SE for a longer period, which gave me the opportunity to first have it play in for several weeks. During this period I didn't listen to it. It was switched on and connected to one of the ports on my switch. Then I had it in my listening chain for a week. After this week I went back to my own switch. I immediately noticed the sound difference I mentioned earlier. Then I did a direct comparison, play a part of a track, change the plugs to the other switch and played it again. The difference was clear, reproducible and rather surprising. I have been involved in digital audio right from the start. I was the second person in my country to make recordings on the Sony PCM100, the first professional digital recorder that was going around studios in the late 70s. And digital kept surprising me. Things that are not supposed to happen with digital do happen and it takes years before we understand what's going on. In the 80s I have almost been crucified for writing that I heard differences between digital interconnects. Bits are bits and all that. And I was not the only one noticing these things. I trust my ears but have to fight the tech inquisition, the malleus nyquistum in hand. But this time, I must say, I had a hard time believing what was going on. Imagine, the audio bits stream from an Intel NUC i7 using the very good RuneRAD protocol to the switch. From there it is sent on to the Pinkphone Ethernet isolator that is directly plugged into the SOTM SMS200 Ultra, known for its high quality USB signal. From there it goes over an AudioQuest Diamond USB cable to the Uptone Audio ISO Regen USB reconditioner that is directly plugged into the MyTech Brooklyn. I've played with every possible combination and this gave the best results on my own switch. Using the AccuFox switch the Ethernet isolator made no difference so I left it out when playing with the AccuFox. It's already too much equipment in series to make sense. And then the switch makes a difference too. But it does. I was not allowed to open the switch and I was told that if I would open it I would only see the resin since all electronics is injected in it. So I have to depend on what AccuVox tells. It starts with an internal low noise voltage regulation. That probably is why an external S booster didn't bring any improvement. Then jitter reduction, reclocking, 
signal sh shaping, EMI elimination and denoising. All these measures do make sense but you would expect that using the SMS200 Ultra that also takes these measures would suffice. Well it didn't obviously. Otherwise the Regen USB reconditioner had not brought further improvements. So digital keeps surprising me. Timing appears to be hypercritical time after time. In my setup one the AccuFox AccuSwitch SE brought a more relaxed sound that has more detail, improved stereo imaging and cleaner highs. Don't be mistaken, my setup one was already rather good. So how come? It's like when a low sun blinds you when you are driving directly into the sun. Cleaning your spectacles does help, but without cleaning the windscreen you still will be blinded by the sun diffracting on the dirt. Cleaning only the inside of the windscreen does help, but only when you clean the outside as well you get a really good view. It's the same with audio, only there are far more pains to keep clean. Some of them are done by manufacturers, but power, cables and as seen here ancillary equipment all should be optimized to the full. That is why there still are people that think of these tweaks as snake oil. They only clean the inside pane of their windshield and are still blinded by the sun. If you carefully optimize every part of your stereo you will hear these improvements in setups from say 3000 euros up. But whether spending the 800 euros on the switch gives you the best return on investment depends on the equipment you use. In my setup one that already is quite well balanced. It's a fine investment. It is a fascinating improvement that inspired me to look further for comparable improvements in the signal path. So if you want to follow my quest, subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Google+. If you like this video please consider supporting the channel through Patreon or PayPal. Any financial support is much appreciated. The links are in the comments. Help me to help even more people enjoy music at home by telling your friends on the web about this channel. I am Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or in the, on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music. <laughs>